This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute, and available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Darren Winterford about training transformations in the HR department of one. Darren Winterford, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thanks, Sean. It's a real pleasure to have you. You're joining us from Australia. Uh, So it's afternoon for me here in Utah. It's morning for you there in Australia. And I'm excited to have a nice conversation around training and tech-enabled training, uh, which really gets into your background. We're going to be focusing on training transformations and the quote unquote HR department of one, what you really mean by that and what that means for the future of the HR profession, for for the HR functions, and really the future of work all the way around. As we get started, I wanted to share Darren's bio with everybody. Darren Winterford is CEO and founder of EdApp has extensive experience building mobile apps and pushing the boundaries of innovation. As a pioneer in the micro-learning space, EdApps teams, led by Darren, are established in Sydney, London, Manila, and New York. Today, the EdApp platform has wide reach, where around 50,000 lessons are completed every day in over 90 countries around the world. With the current focus on the democratization of learning, EdApp, together with the United Nations, have launched Educate All, an initiative to increase access to free, high-quality, and impactful education around the world. Darren is a well-rounded speaker and thought leader. He has been asked to speak at many events, including the L&D and Innovation Tech Fest conference, which resulted in EdApp winning the most innovative award. He has also been featured in podcasts such as Make It Happen and broadcasts like OzBiz. Thanks again for joining us. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background uh, before we launch on into the conversation? No, it's, it's great to be here um, currently in Sydney, Australia, which is um, in lockdown. We uh, unfortunately didn't get our vaccination rates as high as the, the government would like. And Australia has always been an island, but it truly is at the moment with no way on or off. So, um, yeah, I'm interested to, to talk to people from the outside world. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, it's, it's a pleasure. And, you know, I, I've spent some time in Sydney and Brisbane, uh, beautiful places, uh, and I just really, really love Australia and I want to get back. Uh, so hopefully this whole COVID mess gets behind us soon. People will get vaccinations. Um, we'll get past this 
and international travel will open back up and we'll be able to go uh, see things in person. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Yeah. Me yeah. Too well, so let's start by um, talking a little bit about Educate All, this initiative sure. uh, in, in partnership with, you know, the EDAP and the United Nations. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about um, the, really the origins of EDAP and then how you got mm-hmm. connected with the United Nations for this Educate All um, initiative. Awesome. Yeah, we, we really um, have noticed uh, several years ago um, that around the world, the level of training in adult uh, education, particularly workforce training, um, for, for a lot of um, employees is non-existent. And, you know, the, the majority of classroom training probably takes place using PowerPoint or, you know, gathered around a, a whiteboard on the factory floor, you know, if at all. And the, you know, mobile technology has really enabled um, a wider access to education for anyone that, that uh, has a smartphone. And so the origins of EdApp really were to look at the ability to push out workplace learning from, you know, the centre of an organisation, whether that be the HR department, the L&D department, and push it out to people's mobile devices to help them be able to do the best work of their lives every day, to be able to perform um, and to be able to grow and predominantly in the workplace. And we realised that there was, as our platform was being used and growing rapidly, that there were a lot of um, learning and development departments around the world that have a great deal of knowledge when it comes to some of the skills that are more broadly applicable than just in the workplace. So things like leadership skills, things like entrepreneurship, things like running a team effectively, really valuable content that um, really a broader audience could consume. And so we began talking to um, some of our clients and one of our clients was the United Nations who was using EDAP to push out learning into places like Afghanistan and Iraq and, and parts of Southern Africa. And we, there's all this great learning, as I say, that's been put together, but it's limited to, you know, those organisations that are using our platform. And some of it is so good. And it seemed like such a, frankly, such a waste that that material should be limited by, you know, the the corporate veil. And so we began to talk to clients to say, look, you know, is any of this particular IP for your company? Is there anything here that you wouldn't like in the public domain? And for the majority of learning and development professionals, they were very interested in the idea that, hey, would you like this to be able to go and help potentially other adults and potentially young adults to get ahead and maybe to enter the workforce for the first time? So in other words, is there a way that people can access this learning and development material if, they don't, if they're not currently employed and if their um, employer hasn't decided to deploy EdApp? And so what we did is we embarked on this program called Educate All. Even though we are a B2B platform, we actually opened up a part of the product to what we would say, you know, the, the consumer. And now anyone with a smartphone can access EdApp on the App Store, on Google Play, can sign in as what we say a self-directed learner and they can access all the same content as our corporate partners and anyone that has um, decided to donate courseware into that, uh, into that platform. And so now there's six or 700 courses in there that um, are being taken all over the world and it's completely free. Well, that is just amazing. Um, Is the content branded by different companies that contributed it or is it free of branding even? Yeah, it can be, Um, but there's probably 60% of the content. If a self-directed learner discovers it and, you know, is engaging with it and may happen to have a part-time job or um, would like to tell an employer about it, that employer is able to also sign up for a free account. EdApp is is a freemium product. So you can actually access the product, you can access the entire library, and you can rebrand and edit about 60% of the library and deploy out to teams absolutely free. It's only our enterprise features where we uh, start asking for, um, for, for a paid product. Well, that is just incredible. And I'm excited after this interview to go check it out <laughs> because I, I think yeah. that's just, that's really amazing. Uh, and I'm a big believer. So I, I, I'm in the, um, 
the HR people consulting space, but I'm also a professor. Um, mm-hmm. And so I'm a big believer in open education resources and, yeah. and, and providing uh, free information as broadly as possible. Uh, yeah. And, and in the higher ed space, there's a lot of push behind, you know, that uh, behind open source textbooks and, and exactly. various learning technologies. I, I think this is tremendous right. and this could be a really a great uh, complement to a lot of what happens in traditional uh, university yeah. spaces, as well as in, you know, more traditional corporate training spaces, uh, a real no brainer in my mind, you know, to, to utilize these types of resources. Yeah, that's right. And, and I mean, we, we just saw so many, even employees and, and, you know, we're going to touch on the HR department of one, but typically what that means is, you know, one person at an organization and typically let's say between, you know, 50 and hundred um, team members or staff, they, they, there's no L&D department. They're there to hire, to fire, to, you know, move people around the organization and sign off sick leave. You know, that, that's predominantly what they're, they're about. They don't have the time to start investing and thinking about um, growing people. And so what EDAP does, hence the, 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 the term democratizing education, is it allows them to, you know, they can go on, as I say, you know, EDAP's completely free. They can take that. They can look at the, the content in the library. And as I say, there's hundreds of courses. They're rated, reviewed, and there might be leadership skills, you know, working as a team, all of that material. But there's all the UN material is there. We've got material donated by lots of large corporates, you know, across the United States and elsewhere. They can then drag that into their account. They can rebrand it. They can give it some context. They can shoot a video and appear in it. They can change all of it if they wish. But it gives them that template to then be able to say, Here's a dozen or so courses that I can then assign to my, my team. And they receive simply an email that says, hey, you've been invited to edit, jump in, download the app, and you've got yourself there, a world-class, you know, frankly, corporate learning solution that you don't have to pay for unless you're after these, you know, really enterprise-grade features, really advanced analytics and, yeah. and some, some of those things. You know, we have a translation engine that is powered by Google, so we translate into 105 languages. But again, if you don't need that, you don't have to pay for it and, and you can run it out completely free forever. There's no time limits or anything like that. It's, you know, we want this product to be a force for good and, um, and, and it certainly is. Uh, so, um, yeah, as I say, we, we see it being used by very large, you know, the UN, all their affiliated agencies like UNESCO, UN Women, UN AIDS. Um, it's also used in, by other organisations like WHO, uh, like Plan International, it's used a lot in um, in the developing world, um, but also, as you say, there's a lot of universities, a lot of university professors use it to just be that top up micro learning to uh, help embed concepts with students. We all know yeah. students spend an inordinate amount of time on their mobile phone or their smartphone, so you know this is a, a perfect way to be able to just embed those in those topics. And there's um yeah, there's a lot of advanced features in there like space repetition, etc., that can help students really embed that embed that knowledge you're looking for them to retain. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, Bluer Than Indigo Leadership the journey of becoming a truly remarkable leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue. What some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There's no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of our problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Yeah, that is so, so cool. Uh, and when this feeds into really what we're going to be talking about with the HR department of one and really trans, uh, learning and training transformation that's happening, um, you know, across spaces, 
Uh, tell us a little bit about what, I mean, this is clearly what you do all day. Um, tell us more about what you're seeing in terms of, of these learning training transformations that are happening uh, yeah. in companies. Yeah, I mean, look, look, COVID has been a big accelerator of what we were seeing anyway, but, but obviously the traditional classroom, you know, where people were booking a time here with a trainer and sitting in a dark room with, a, you know, an overhead projector, you know, five or six years ago, um, you know, that model is clearly being challenged. Um, we've now got this mixture of at least hybrid, if not, you know, totally remote, um, even on the, you know, in the more traditional workplaces, um, we have flexible hours and, and the like. So the, the idea of pulling people into a classroom, um, you know, we, particularly in the workplace, is, uh, is less and less palatable. And so these kind of hybrid tools like EdApp that, you know, we have a feature that allows you to run a Zoom and then to take place in some, you know, learning intervals that take place, you know, over the next five to six weeks. It's delivered out in micro learning. So it's in very small chunks and you do a few minutes a day or, you know, uh, 30 minutes a week at your own pace um, on your mobile device. And that very much has been seen as, you know, uh, a model uh, that represents the sort of flexibility and the um, power that that organisations are now looking for with these flexible workforces and the way that the the workforce is evolving. Um, And so we see particularly, you know, this move from classroom to what we would call e-learning. With with EdApp, it really is just about accelerating that past, still asking people to sit down at a desktop um, which again already feels like something that you know belongs in the in the dark ages, um, and pushing content out directly to a mobile device and having that accessible to the employee is definitely that other key thing that that we're seeing out of out of HR departments. They're looking for something highly engaging, uh, you know. They're looking for something that um, they can maybe even foster a little bit of. Um, competition between employees, and I mean that in a friendly way, but but ways that can also help a team feel a sense of belonging. And so, you know, the smartphone, there's no doubt, you know, everyone's learned, either it's via social media or otherwise, that, you know, these devices do have a sort of personal connection. If we can include some gamification and, you know, EdApp has things like leaderboards and it does enable also, a, it fosters a sense of, organizational culture and it, it does add back more than just 30 minutes of sitting in front of you know a laptop or a desktop and just getting through your company training it's much more than that we can instill a sense of culture um in the um in, in the way that the, the the learning is is taken on by employees and and that does tend to be the resounding feedback from um, companies of all sizes and you know ed apps deployed by some organizations out to 30 or 40 thousand employees all the way down the bottom to to 30 or 40 um and and the feedback is the same it it, it does um it does enable uh those employees to feel like their their employers care about their welfare that they're investing in those employees that um they are part of a team and, you know, we have a number of features, discussions and assignments and these various ways that, that you feel a part of the community when you're, when you're using it, even if it's amongst, you know, a small organisation. Um, you can see and there's badges being earned and, and that, sort of, that, that sort of triggers, I guess, that, that helps someone feel not just that they're completing the company's learning, but they're engaged and they're, they're part of something, they're part of their team. Their employer, as I say, is, has taken the time to um, help develop them as an individual, and uh, and so yeah, we, we tend to find very very good feedback, and I would say that you know dramatically, the the growth of our platform and indeed of mobile learning has you know was on the rise, but post COVID and and you know obviously we've seen about three hundred percent growth, so we're talking about something pretty significant. Yeah, that is just so cool. And you talked a little bit about gamification. You talked about Mm micro-credentialing and the micro-learning and the badges. I mean, all of this um, is is very important in the modern 
technology enhanced learning space, right? Whether we're talking about Mm -hmm. a university setting, a corporate setting, whatever. Uh, And, and we really have to wrap our minds around how to, how to do that more effectively. And it's, it's wonderful that here we have a resource um, that is, is free and, and that anyone can, can start uh, checking out. So I think that's incredible. So how does this then connect to the idea of the HR department of one? What do you mean by that? Uh, and why is that important for us to think about? Yeah, we, it, it can be easy for, um, you know, large software companies and business to business solutions to focus on, you know, the, the, the enterprise customer um, and look, you know, the likes of, you know, Coke, Nike, Apple, Google, wonderful clients to have um, large revenue and, um, you know, large cohorts of learners. Um, but the majority of, of Americans um, actually belong to organisations and work for organisations where it's not of a size that will have a complete L&D team. It's not of a size that will have um, individuals dedicated to just authoring and putting together you know, material to help them develop as a, as a, uh, as an individual. And in fact, the majority of us work for what we call companies with a HR department of one. And, and that person is responsible for, as I say, for recruitment, for, you know, employee welfare, for managing, you know, sick pay, managing pay, managing benefits, juggling legal, um, you know, requirements of different states, you know, their day, unfortunately, isn't, focused on the growth personally of a team member or an employee. And so that we tend to find is, is a real shift we would like to make with EdApp to not only be able to have a very powerful corporate solution, but to be able to provide and, as, as we said, you know, democratise workplace learning for those people, be accessible for those HR departments of one who, you know, potentially can take an afternoon to explore our platform, look for those, those bits of courseware that are going to be most effective for their team, do some customization, you know, rebrand it, get a message from the boss in there, go through and take out anything they don't like, add anything that they do that might be hyper-local. Maybe they can have a, you know, team member go and take some photos of, whatever it is they're educating about, you can easily just reauthor that into the platform. It's what you see is what you get editor. So it's very, very simple to use. And then they can go and deploy that out. And and most, in most cases that can be done very, very quickly. And we've found we've been able to optimize for, you know, that HR department of one to then, you know, to give them a learning solution that they can then talk about and not only with existing employees, but they've then got, you know, if they're trying to bring new people into the organisation, you know, even though they're under-resourced, they do have an onboarding program. You know, they do have skills development. They do have some of the access to learning and development that would normally be enjoyed by a larger organisation in these smaller organisations, which frankly, as I say, most of us work for and those that need the most help, we, you know, all the largest companies at some stage started at this scale. And what we really want to be doing is fostering those organisations to become, you know, the leaders of the future. And so that's why for us, you know, we, we love talking to these kinds of companies. There are obviously thousands of them out there, um, but they have a real need. And we tend to find that they're quite progressive. They're very interested and, and for a lot of them, they can, they can use the product even without charge. So um, for us, that's a, it's a really wonderful result if we're able to touch these, um, yeah, these levels of organisations that, frankly, you know, currently have nothing. They, they currently probably use PowerPoint or they might sit around and, and have a discussion once a month with the, the new round of, of people that are onboarding. Incredible, incredible. Well, thank you so much, Darren, for providing a little bit of an overview uh, to EdApp and all of the, the really great work that you and your team are doing. I know at the time we're getting short on time, but before we close, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about um, your work, what you can offer them and, and their organization, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. 
Sure. Yeah, the best way to um to you know experience EdApp is is you know obviously just go and visit us at edapp.com. Very very uh, very easy, very accessible. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, um, if you want to connect personally. Um, and you know, I'm always happy to to talk to anyone interested um, in exploring more about the space. Um, but yeah, we're you know we're really really excited about um, where 2022 is is going to take us. We've obviously seen this massive digital transformation, and, and that includes uh, the learning and training space as well. And you know we would really like to uh, continue to you know really be able to offer this this fantastic platform to those that that need it most. So um, yeah, we're really looking forward to continuing our our growth, particularly there in the US. Excellent. I know I'm going to check it out. I encourage listeners to check it out. Uh, check out Darren uh, and his team and find out more about what they can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. That you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership, ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.